Hi guys, welcome. If you're new here, my name's Nikki. I'm a beekeeper and I make beekeeping content. If that's something you like watching, then hit the subscribe button. If you're one of my returning subscribers, uh, you guys are my favorite. So I truly appreciate you coming back and listening to what I have to say. Today's gonna be a little different video from my normal content and I am going to show you a nest of yellow jackets that I removed recently. Now because this is not my normal content, I want to just kind of go into how this removal came to be uh, and why I did it to give you a little bit of context. We're not very often going to have this content on my channel. Um, uh, if you don't know, I am a hobbyist beekeeper. That is 99% of what my content is gonna be. I do have some training in wasp nest removals and I have done that uh, from time to time, but it is not something that I do on a routine basis. Now, um, this specific removal, I was contacted by a friend of mine who let me know that she had a family member that had a hive of honeybees in her house and asked if I would be interested in coming and possibly removing them and I told her that I was. So we exchanged contact information and the homeowner reached out to me. The homeowner let me know that she had this hive of honeybees. She was certain they were honeybees. They'd been in the side of the house for some time and recently had gotten more aggressive and were stinging her guests, her and her children. Um, so I told her I would come out and take a look and see if I could get them out of her house for her. Now when I got there though, uh, pretty quickly I realized these were not a hive of honeybees, these were yellow jackets. And if you do removals of honeybees, you know and you likely have had people ask you to remove yellow jackets because it's not uncommon for people to uh, not realize what yellow jackets are or mistake them for honeybees. Um, it's not, that's not something specific to this family, that's kind of a uh, general misconception with the public um, unless you really um, are involved in bees and know the different species it's not uncommon to um, confuse them now most of the time when i get a call to do a removal and i show up and they're yellow jackets 99.9 .9 of the time i will refer that homeowner to somebody who does uh, removals for a living because i don't do it very often um, and if you're not doing that every day it's very tough to keep up that skill set um, it's time consuming to do a yellow jacket removal it's completely different than honeybees so most of the time i'm just going to refer them to somebody else um, and that's what I did. I did discuss with the homeowner what her options were and how she could get these removed. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail and not respect the privacy of the family, but I will share with you some information that they allowed me to share. So in having this conversation with the homeowner, um, she had let me know that she was recently widowed and overall just not really in a position at that point to have somebody else come out and remove these yellow jackets. Now in my time there with the family, I uh, spent some time with them. I talked to the children that were in the home. Uh, they actually were showing me where they had been stung and they had active stings on their body. Um, and first and foremost, above anything else I do in life, I am a mom and I know the links that I would go to to protect my children. So I really sympathized with this woman and um, decided I would come back out the next day and try to remove these yellow jackets for this family. I will caution anybody watching this video, even uh, my friends who on here who are beekeepers, if you do not have experience removing yellow jackets, uh, do not try to do that without having somebody with you that does know what they're doing. This is completely different. Uh, it's a totally different experience removing these uh, girls rather than honeybees. So that is the disclaimer I want to put out there, um, that this is not something you should do if you don't have experience in it. And uh, this was an incredibly long intro and I I am um, sorry that it's so long, so let's just get to removing these yellow jackets. So this is the area of the home where the nest was located, and this is a uh, window that has been closed off and covered with this plywood. Um, there is a layer of insulation between the window and the plywood, and you can see here this is the opening that the yellow jackets are entering and exiting from. The homeowner thought that the yellow jackets were possibly up in the plywood area, um, but I did let her know that it's possible that they could be down in um, the walls of the home as well. 
The first thing that I like to do when I do any type of removal like this is to get as many of the yellow jackets out of the nest um, as possible before I go to access it. Uh, do that really simply by using a shop vac. That's what I'm doing here. Now I do fill the shop vac about a third of the way full on the inside with water and add a little bit of Dawn dish soap. The theory behind the Dawn is that it uh, breaks up the surface tension and helps the yellow jackets to drown a little bit faster. Now you don't have to use that and there are some people who you know claim that it doesn't work or it's not necessary um, but for me you know it's such an inexpensive thing and it's not harmful so I always um, add that when I do any type of removal. As you can see here um, I'm just kind of sitting and waiting and have the vacuum um, off to the side a little bit and what that does is it's going to catch those yellow jackets as they're coming back it just kind of sucks them right back in and also when um, they are leaving now just a different angle here for you to look at now this vacuuming process is not really upsetting to the yellow jackets they're not alarmed at this point, um, more confused than anything. As you see, the ones that are coming back into the nest, they're sort of flying off to my right, trying to get an idea of what's going on. Um, so there's some confusion there. And as far as the yellow jackets that are in the nest, they really aren't sure either. They're very just attracted to light. So they're coming out uh, and really can't get a good look at what's going on outside the nest at this point. In fact, if you do a removal like this inside of a home, I like to have um, windows, you know, shades open, blinds open. And if you're inside of a home doing this, they will actually come out and go right past you and go right to that window and congregate. So at this point, they're not really um, concerned with me or what I'm doing. I've just added a couple minutes of this process um, to show you guys, but I actually do stand there and vacuum for a pretty decent amount of time, usually about 45 minutes. Um, just be patient and really try to get as many of them out as you can without um, them being upset or alarmed is really, in my opinion, the way to go. And there's a pretty good amount of yellow jackets in this nest. I kind of have a steady stream of incoming and outgoing there from the nest. i got some kind of peeking out there to try to tell what's going on. And you can see as they're coming out, um, they're not coming out to attack. They're just pretty confused. Yellow jackets are typically more aggressive and defensive than honeybees, uh, but this colony really wasn't too bad. Um, I think what helped as far as uh, their defensiveness is that the homeowner had not tried to mess with them in any way. They did not spray them or try to block off the entrance, uh, so that helped a ton. By and large, those things aren't really effective if you are trying to get rid of a nest by yourself. Most of the insecticides that we purchase uh, non-commercially are contact insecticides. So they really are only effective at killing the insect it comes into contact with and does very little to get rid of the hive as a whole. The other thing that a lot of homeowners do is they will try to block off the entrance to the nest uh, thinking that it, they are sealed in there and they will just kind of die off. Um, but that's not true either. These yellow jackets, if that were to happen, they'll just create another entrance to their hive. And in a situation like this, it was very likely that had they done that, um, that entrance could have been to the interior of the home. Um, so you never really want to try and do that. It's not effective. you see there I just kind of tapped on the side of the house a little bit um, I'll do that periodically while I'm standing here and the reason for that is as I'm vacuuming you'll see the stream of incoming and outgoing traffic from the yellow jacket start to slow down a little bit and just by kind of beating on the side there it 
gets them a little stirred up and they will start to rush out and that just helps me speed this process up. So I wasn't really able to determine where these girls were coming from just based on the little opening that was there. So I decided to just open it up a little bit, see if I can get a better look and locate the nest. So after I um, opened it up just a little bit, I was able to determine that they were coming up from below, which meant that the nest was down inside the wall of the home. Uh, shortly after this, I did take a break and talk to the homeowner. Um, at this time, she had more family members that had uh, come over, and I discussed with her what her options were as far as taking the nest out and where we would have to make cuts in the home and that we were able to possibly do that from the inside or from the exterior of the home. And I let her confer with family members and ultimately um, they decided they wanted me to cut on the outside of the home. They had been planning to make some modifications and redo um, some structural things on the home and redo the siding. So they wanted me to cut from the outside. Um, and I did assure her that I would try to make the opening as small as I could um, and still get the nest out safely. You'll notice here um, that I'm wearing a full suit. If you watch my uh, bee videos, you notice that I do not wear a complete suit in those videos. Um, I just typically wear my jacket and veil, but when it comes to yellow jackets or any type of wasp, really, I will always wear the full suit. I'm not very fond of this veil. If you um, kind of had chatted with me in the comment sections, I don't care for the fencing veils. I find it really tough to keep off my face. Even here I have kind of a baseball cap on and it helps, but it's still a struggle for me to get um, to keep it off my face. Once you start cutting and you get close to the nest, the uh, level of defensiveness definitely increases uh, with these wasps. So at this point, I kind of really get into a zone and get focused on getting this nest out. And unfortunately, uh, I did not notice at a certain point that my camera had stopped filming. So I don't have actual footage of me pulling the nest out, um, but I do have um, footage of the nest uh, later on in a few minutes in the video and um, some really cool things that I was able to film with it after the fact. Because I was trying to get it out um, with the smallest amount of damage possible. I did not get the nest out in one whole piece. Um, I did have to remove it um, from the top to the bottom. So I did remove it layer by layer, which took a little bit more time, but ultimately I think is really the best thing for the homeowner. This was the point that I realized that my camera had stopped recording and I was a little bummed that I didn't uh, capture removing the actual nest from the hive, um, but you do what you can. Um, right now, um, as you can see, I'm just kind of going through making sure that I've gotten all of the nest, all of the envelope and the family was still a little concerned with the amount of yellow jackets that were flying around so i just took a little time and tried to vacuum up as many as i could and i um, just let them know that i wasn't going to be able to get all of them um, and i would do my best So off to uh, my right there on that bench is where I have the nest um, laid out. 
I just kind of go over and start to vacuum up any of the yellow jackets that have congregated there on the pieces of the nest. And again, just making sure that I have everything. The, you can see the yellow jackets there in the background flying around. Uh, they're a little frenzied. They're confused. They don't really know what's going on. Um, their home does not exist anymore. And again, for the little girls that live in this house, I did spend some extra minutes trying to vacuum up as many as I could. So there in my hand I have a piece of the envelope um, to show the homeowner and her little girls. A lot of that um, got vacuumed up when I was doing the removal, so I wanted to show them a little bit of it. And there you can see all of the layers of the nest laid out. And I have got most of the yellow jackets um, vacuumed off of the comb. Now, as I said before, my daughter is really interested in uh, beekeeping and kind of learning about different insects in general. So I do take this home so that she can check it out. And here in a minute, I'll show you. We got some really uh, neat footage. Um, and I will apologize in advance. It seems like every one of my videos, one of my animals have to be in that. So I have a little bit of a, a whiny cat in that video, so I do apologize. So here is the inside of the shop back when I'm done. Um, it's just kind of a little bit of a mess with water. We've got a lot of yellow jackets in there, uh, some actual pieces of the nest that were vacuumed in, and some insulation. And here is the footage that I was able to capture with my daughter later that evening. See all the eggs in there? There's eggs in those cells. Got different stages of larva. And we got one yellow jacket that is emerging as we speak. And look at the size of those eggs compared to the size of honeybee eggs. So much bigger. There's one right over here that's kind of bobbing up a lot. Where is it? Um, where'd he go? Right over there. So the eggs in these cells almost look suspended versus honeybee eggs that are kind of right in the middle. He's still, he, she's still chewing her way out here.
how long do they usually take? Do you know? To come out? Yeah. A couple minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is too many flowers. See it chewing? Oh kind of chewing away at the capping that's on the cell. Are just teasing oh the God, larva in there. So that is the birth of a yellow jacket. Oh my gosh. That's a full bee. Only it doesn't have a home to go to. Well, that's just kind of sad now. No, these things are kind of mean. Kind of a little clumsy when they first come out. But look at those eggs, though. Get a better angle. You can see the eggs in there. You can see all the different stages the larvae are in. Below the still moving. I think the cats just have to be in my videos. Or they think they do, anyways. No. Get off of there. <laughs> Put him down, Paige. So these cells here look pretty empty. So I bet you we had some come out of those cells recently. If you look, Can kind of see the size of these cells here versus the size of these cells. These are significantly bigger and that's because this part of the nest are queen cells. So all of those will hatch into queens. all of this here, this paper-like material, is a part of the envelope which encases the nest. Can you just kind of get a look inside these cells. The whiniest cats, I think, on the planet. Those cells there are empty. Just kind of get a better look inside of them. Okay, guys, that was it. Uh, that wraps up our yellow jacket removal video. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.